Hi, my name is Allison Snyder, and my service learning presentation is on Habitat for Humanity. The Lancaster Lebanon Habitat for Humanity has been helping out the community since 1986. It is a Christian ministry that strives to help find stable and affordable housing for those individuals and or families that are in need. As stated on their website, our vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. So, why did I select this organization to perform my service learning hours? I wanted to be able to learn new skills while helping out the community at the same time. By utilizing the new skills that I learned, I was putting time into making a suitable living situation for an individual and or family that was in need of affordable housing. Not only did this help build my skills and knowledge, but it also helped make a difference in the lives of those in need. The population being served by Habitat are first-time homeowners that are in need of affordable and stable housing. These individuals and or families currently live in below standard living conditions, which includes Section 8 or public housing. One of the first things that is important when an individual is looking into Habitat is their income. The chart on the right demonstrates annual income requirements in order to be eligible for the home ownership program through Habitat. Prior to applying at Habitat, these individuals and or families were rejected from being eligible for a traditional mortgage. These individuals must have a gross income that will be able to support the affordable mortgage that Habitat can provide for them. As seen, income requirements are also based off of the size of the family. These individuals must also have housing expenses that cost greater than 30% of their income. Other things that are considered when selecting a Habitat family our credit history, ability to make current rent payments on time, and debt. <clears throat> Individuals must also be able to complete certain requirements in order to be eligible for buying a home through Habitat. Sweat equity is a requirement of these individuals and or families. Sweat equity means that future homeowners must put in 200 to 400 hours of work into building Habitat homes and or working at the ReStore. Also included in these hours are classes regarding finances and home maintenance. This helps better prepare first-time homeowners on how to manage expenses and budget for routine maintenance or emergency maintenance that may arise. That is why it is also important to educate individuals and or families about the importance of having an emergency fund set up to save for any home maintenance repairs that are unexpected. Individuals and or families also need to have enough money to put 1% down on their Habitat home. This means that they must save during their time with Habitat in order to have the funds to put the required money down on their new home. They should also be prepared for a 20 to 30 year mortgage and are expected to be able to pay their payments on time. One of the most obvious social issues that these individuals and or families experience is poor living conditions. Habitat helps to provide homes in order to improve living conditions and allow individuals to be able to be homeowners. We spent a lot of time making sure that the homes were in the condition that they needed to be. For instance, from a healthcare perspective, we made sure to be especially careful when dealing with any paint that was on the walls previously that may contain lead. We needed to utilize wet sanding to make sure that the lead did not go into the air and needed to take extra precautions with gloves and respirators to protect ourselves. This is important in case any children are in the home in order to minimize the risk of lead exposure and possible lead poisoning. Adequate support systems are also important. These individuals may or may not have adequate support. During their time at Habitat, they have the ability to work with many other workers Habitat homeowners, and volunteers. This can help make connections and encourage support. And lastly, for social, these individuals may struggle with financial understanding in regards to home ownership. Habitat requires individuals to participate in financial and mortgage classes in order to be better prepared for any financial challenges and to have a better understanding of finances and home ownership. From a political aspect, these individuals and or their families do not currently have affordable housing within their local community. 
Habitat makes it possible for them to find affordable and stable housing and the community comes together to help provide that for them. One thing that could be completed possibly at more of a state level is to advocate for more resources and support. These homes can be kind of costly to repair and set up and more funding may be able to provide additional resources for Habitat to put in the homes. Habitat tries to save and utilize whatever they can from homes, but there are still many expenses that need to be covered. Economic issues in this population revolve around having a stable income and affordable housing. Habitat makes sure that these individuals are able to provide a sustainable income prior to being accepted into the program. These individuals may not have much money saved and may be living paycheck to paycheck, so Habitat encourages saving and financial responsibility. This is what will help lead to affordable access to housing and increase their access to resources. By having a better financial base, these individuals may now be able to attend classes or send their children to college in order to further their education. One of the biggest cultural issues is that some of these individuals face language barriers as English may not be their first language. Habitat encourages these individuals to take part in English classes in order to better understand the language. There are also multiple different age categories and multiple generations that Habitat is working with when helping individuals to become first-time homeowners. This means that certain things may need to be considered for when preparing a home, such as any handicap accessibility, etc. To start my service learning project, I went to the Lancaster Lebanon Habitat for Humanity website and signed up to become a volunteer. I filled out my personal information along with an interest form and what areas I was interested in volunteering with. After that, I was able to sign up for a new volunteer orientation. I went to the Habitat Restore for the orientation, which was an hour long, which introduced me to Habitat and its values and all of the ways that Habitat has helped out the community. After orientation, I was able to sign up for volunteer work. I chose to volunteer with construction. Construction days are eight hour long days, so I completed four eight hour days in order to meet my 30 hours of required volunteer work. <clears throat> what revisions and considerations could be made to this service learning project? <clears throat> More time at Habitat in order to see a home from start to finish would be very rewarding. It would also be neat if we had more interactions with Habitat homeowners, as this can be hit or miss depending on when everyone volunteers. <clears throat> and lastly, I believe shorter volunteer shifts would make volunteering more appealing to a lot of people. Sometimes it may be difficult to dedicate an entire eight hour day to volunteer work, but having shorter shifts, such as four hours instead of eight hours, may fit people's schedules better. Here are my SMART objectives for my service learning project. The first objective is by the end of the service learning project, I will assist the community in building and setting up one home. During my time at Habitat, I helped build and set up two homes that are side by side on South Christian Street in Lancaster City. I had the opportunity to hang drywall, do drywall repair, sand drywall, do interior and exterior painting, along with a few other various tasks. A lot of time is put into each of these habitat homes and attention to detail is key. Whatever materials can be saved are and the new materials are utilized when necessary. My second objective is that by the end of the service learning project, I will learn three challenges encountered by community members experiencing poverty. The one main obvious challenge and is how habitat helps the community is housing. These individuals that are applying for habitat homes is because they do not qualify for a traditional mortgage and are in need of affordable and stable housing for themselves and or their family. Another challenge is language barriers. In some cases, English is not a first language for these individuals. Habitat considers English classes as part of sweat equity hours for these people. A third challenge is access to resources. These individuals struggle with access to good living conditions and may live in unsafe situations and may not have the same access to other resources such as food, schooling, and the ability to save money. According to Habitat's website, 95% of Habitat homeowners still live in their Habitat home. This creates stable housing for these individuals and gives them mortgages that they can afford. 
67% of these individuals have also had the ability to increase their income since purchasing their homes. This allows for greater access to resources. And lastly, my third objective is that by the end of this service learning project, I will have at least one opportunity to discuss with a current or future homeowner how Habitat for Humanity has impacted them. One individual has had multiple positive outcomes come from receiving a home through Habitat. One thing being that it has encouraged her to have stable work with a steady income in order to be able to provide an income to support the household. A big thing that she was excited about was that she is now able to put her money towards her home and not continue to throw her money away on rent each month. Also, through her sweat equity hours, she was able to develop construction skills that will greatly benefit her in the future, and she will be able to complete some of these construction tasks as needed on her own versus paying someone to do them. This will allow her to save money by being able to do them herself. The greatest impact on this population is that they are now able to have access to affordable housing and are able to own homes of their very own. These individuals and families are more financially sound due to being more educated on how to be financially responsible when it comes to owning a home. They also have more access to resources as previously stated. This allows them to be able to provide more opportunities for themselves and their family, such as education, food, and having more things. Um, more money for things such as the movies, vacations, etc. And lastly, they receive support from Habitat workers and have the opportunity to gain a support system from this great organization. So how did Habitat for Humanity affect me personally? Throughout this experience, I was given the opportunity to gain new skills and knowledge about Habitat itself as well as construction. Jim, our construction leader, is very knowledgeable and really takes the time to make sure that everyone understands every task. He pays close attention to details and wants to make sure that things are done correctly. Spending time at Habitat, I am also more aware of what's going on in the community and the needs of the community as well as the people. As a professional, helping individuals and or their families have a stable living situation with affordable housing can help improve access to resources such as education and health care. More than half of these individuals have increased their income since purchasing a Habitat home, which could result in access to health insurance or improved health benefits. Also, improving living conditions can help decrease the incidence of disease from living in poor conditions or close living quarters. Here is my reference, and this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching.